All right, hello everybody. It's Ryan here, and I'm just putting together a revision lesson for A-level business studies, which is about network diagrams. Now, a network diagram takes a complex task and puts it together into smaller pieces. And what that allows a business to do is to figure out which pieces need to be done first, and which pieces can be done simultaneously. And it allows them to sort of streamline their operations so they can get things done as efficiently as possible. And the first thing you need to know when you're looking at a network diagram is what all the lines and the circles mean. And so the first thing to understand is that you'll have a circle, and the circle is what you could call a node. A node represents a point in time. It has no duration. It's just a moment where you say, okay, I have finished this task, and I can now move on to do another task. What a node allows you to do is it allows you to say, okay, these things have been completed, and now that I've completed those things, I can move on to the next task. And there are two parts to a node. In fact, there are three, really. There'll be this part here, which is sort of the name of the node. They tend to be put into like one, two, three, and four. The name means absolutely nothing, so you don't have to worry about that so much. Um, this is called the earliest start time in this quadrant up here. And then this is the latest finish time. And I'll, I'll talk about sort of what those things mean in just a minute. Now, when you've got nodes, you can also have tasks, because the whole thing about the network diagram is you're putting together this complex project into different tasks. Tasks are represented by lines. So you would say that this is a task here, and the task could, well, it will have a name, so you like to say that this is task A, and it will also have a duration. It will tell you the number of days or weeks or minutes that it takes to complete that task. And in this case, we'll just put a number here, let's say that it takes five minutes to complete task A. When you're finished with task A, you would, you would, you would say that you're finished by putting another point in time to represent that you're done with task A, in which point you'd say, well, let's, let's draw another node to say, okay, task A has been completed, and now that I've completed task A, maybe what you can do is you can say, well, I'll then start task B. So you can basically just say, there's task B, and maybe task B takes something like six minutes or something like that. You then say that task B is finished, so you can draw another point in time, which is another node. And that's how you represent smaller tasks within this larger project. Now, the key thing to, to know about this is that the earliest start time in this node is for the next task. So you can say the earliest start time for the next task, which in this case would be task A. The earliest start time for task A is represented here. The latest finish time is for the previous task. So if you want to know where the task A's latest finish time is, it's not here, but it's here. So the latest finish time for task A is going to be in this one here. So the key things to know about for task A is that its earliest start time would be in this node, the node preceding it. The duration is listed in the task. And the latest finish time for the preceding task, which is to say task A, would be here. So therefore, the earliest start time for task B would be here. So that's, and I'm going to start to, to, um, to label these as E, S, T for task B is there, and then the duration of task B is here. The latest finish time for task B would be here, and you could say that is L, F, T for task B. So that's just the introduction of what all these different things mean. And what we'll do is in the next couple of videos, we'll go through to describe how it is that you actually use these and construct a diagram.